Friends, there's an old saying that time waits for no one. But why has time become so important in our lives? Just think for a moment, if time didn't exist, would we still exist? Of course we would. So, is it possible that we humans created the concept of time for our convenience? Don't you think time is slowly becoming a chain for us, controlling our actions? Well, advancements in physics suggest we should consider the possibility that time might not exist. But how can this be? And if it's true, what does it mean? Understanding this will take some time, but one thing is clear. Even if time doesn't exist, our lives would continue as they do today. Over the last 100 years, we've explained our universe with two incredibly successful physical theories. The general theory of relativity and quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics is the branch of physics that explains the behavior of very small things like atoms, electrons, photons and molecules. You can't see these particles with your eyes, but everything around you, including yourself, is made up of them. In classical mechanics, objects are at a specific place at a specific time. But in quantum mechanics, objects are surrounded by probabilities. They might be at point A or point B. To illustrate, let's say I place an apple in front of you. Now close your eyes and open them again. You'd see the apple still there. But what if I told you that while your eyes were closed, the apple disappeared and reappeared as you opened them? Would you believe me? Probably not. But since your eyes were closed, how can you prove it didn't happen? It's an intriguing thought, right? Quantum mechanics deals with subatomic particles in a similar way. Once you observe a subatomic particle in a particular state, you can't predict its state the next time you see it. It's said that when you're not observing the particle, it exists everywhere. And once you start observing it again, it settles into a specific state. Particles can change into any quantum state, which is described by a probability distribution function or wave function. When you observe a particle, it appears where the wave's amplitude is highest. Understanding the next part is easier. If subatomic particles are moving, they have energy. Since everything around us is made of these particles, the forces of nature we experience come from them. These particles are called quanta. Quantum mechanics is a fascinating field, though challenging to explain simply. For now, understand that it deals with the particles and interactions of the microscopic world. Now, let's talk about the general theory of relativity. This is another fascinating phenomenon. Sir Albert Einstein is renowned for many discoveries, but the theory of relativity is among his greatest. This theory revolutionized our understanding of space and time. In simple terms, Relativity means that the laws of physics are the same everywhere. The laws of light and gravity we experience on Earth are the same for an alien on another planet. This universality means our history, our past, is local. Different observers perceive the timing and spacing of events differently. What might be hundreds of years for us could be mere moments for someone in a high-speed rocket, all due to gravity. Einstein's complex math showed that the fabric of space and time bends near massive objects, affecting the motion of objects. Quantum mechanics and the general theory of relativity work well in their respective fields, but clash fundamentally. Scientists agree that we need a new, unified theory, possibly a theory of quantum gravity, to explain how gravity affects atomic particles. However, creating such a theory is extremely difficult. The closest approach is loop quantum gravity, which suggests that space-time itself is quantized into small units. But what does it mean to quantize space-time? It means that space-time consists of fundamental units at a very small scale. If you zoom in infinitely on space-time, you'd see that time doesn't flow continuously but in discrete ticks, like a clock. Loop quantum gravity dismisses the element of time, and other theories also remove time as a fundamental component of reality. So, if these theories are correct, time might not exist. But this raises a complex question. What does it mean for something to exist? In physics, 
We don't directly account for tables, chairs, or humans, but we know they exist because we understand the particles they're made of. However, we don't know what fundamental particle time is made of. You can describe the elements of air or the atoms of a table, but we can't describe the fundamental nature of time. So, until we understand how time is created, we can't definitively say it exists. It's possible that time doesn't exist at any level. Saying that time doesn't exist is like saying tables don't exist. It's nearly impossible to manage our world without time. Our lives depend on it. We plan our future based on our past. We act as agents whose current actions affect future outcomes. But how can we think about the future if time doesn't exist? And why punish someone for past mistakes if time isn't real? Discovering that time doesn't exist would drastically change our perception and motivation. That's all for today. What do you think? Does time really exist or is it an illusion created by humans? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you learned something from this video, like and share it with your friends and family. For more interesting videos, subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to be the first to see our new content. Until then, goodbye.